Cool. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about deployment patterns uh, for console in Kubernetes. Uh, a very brief and quick introduction about me. My name is Vishal. I'm CTO and founder at InfraCloud. I'm a Fission contributor, which is a FAS on Kubernetes project, uh, function as a service. I'm also GDE for Google Cloud and Kubernetes, and I run the local Kubernetes Pune uh, meetup almost every month for the last three years. Uh, so today we are going to talk about console and the Kubernetes uh, patterns you know, for deploying console inside Kubernetes based on your use case and based on you know, what you're trying to achieve. Now, before we go deep into the patterns themselves, I would like to quickly recap a few fundamental and key concepts you know, that are related to console uh, that might be useful in our demo and discussion later. Uh, console offers, one of the things that it offers is a key value store. Uh, a key can be a string and the value can be a string or JSON or YAML or HCL. And uh, these keys and values can be, uh, can be namespaced or hierarchical. For example, you can have folders and then within those folders you can have keys uh, and the folder hierarchy you know, can be as deep as you want. Now, this is a really useful feature for a lot of application configurations, for properties, uh, for external system URLs, for isolating environment URLs so that we want to remember which uh, URL points to which environment and those kind of things, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so you can store the key and value once in console centrally, and then you can technically access them from all of your infrastructure, all of your applications, which is a very super useful feature, uh, especially for managing configuration management in, you know, in large scale applications. Now, when you store these keys, one of the super cool features and important features is watching those keys uh, for changes. Uh, so as soon as something changes, you can get notified about that. And uh, you, know, you can do certain things with that notification. Now, the best part is this notification is not only for keys, but also for services, nodes, uh, events. So technically you can watch if a service you know, has changed or if service has gone up or down and those kind of things. Uh, same thing with you know, nodes and other things in infrastructure. Now, what happens is when a key changes, uh, you as a user get notified and this notification happens in you know, one of the two ways, uh, they are basically called handlers. A handler could be a script, uh, which is called by uh, you know, the console agent or, or any process. And other is HTTP endpoint. So console basically notices a change in your key or event or node, and you know, it calls back an HTTP endpoint, almost like a callback, uh, so that you get notified. And the payload of that HTTP endpoint is a JSON object, which you check on parts and use to do certain things you know, on, on that change. Uh, again, some very interesting use cases. For example, uh, typically we want to store application configuration changes in a way that they can be changed at runtime and not be part of the binary. Uh, very simple use case. Uh, I'm running an application in production. I typically run it at information level debugging, but if some issue happens, I want to enable debug uh, logs, right? So I can simply go to console, change the setting from info to debug, and the application can start emitting debug level logs so I can start you know, debugging the application better. Uh, same thing with uh, you know, infrastructure. You want to get notified if a node changes, if a certain service goes down or up, and those you know, a lot of interesting events around that. Now, watches are typically defined uh, with an agent, and uh, a simple watch I have defined here on the slide is uh, a watch of HTTP type uh, handler. So I'm watching for a key called current CT. Uh, and then I'm gonna call HTTP handler. Uh, I'm gonna you know, define the path here where the JSON payload will be sent uh, along with some additional things like header and timeout. Uh, so those are some basic things I want to cover before we go into kind of a small demo and you know, start uh, playing this around. Cool, so I'm gonna start with the demo. I'll quickly explain what the demo is about. Uh, then we'll go to code walkthrough and try out things uh, for real. Uh, so I have a simple application. Uh, and you know, an application has two endpoints. I'll quickly jump to the code of that application. And in the same Kubernetes cluster, I have console server set up using the console Helm chart. Uh, it's running three uh, stateful set uh, replicas uh, because it's a three uh, node Kubernetes cluster. And I just want to run three for high availability. And console agent, I'm not running using the standard Helm chart, but I'm doing a deployment of console agent separately outside of the Helm chart. And I'm just running two replicas, although I have three nodes in the application. And there is a purpose to that. I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. And the application is running right now a single replica. Now let's look at the application code base and then you know, uh, start playing with the demo. So the application is a simple Golang uh, application, very tiny, simple application. Uh, it has basically two endpoints, the home endpoint and the update endpoint. The home endpoint, 
gets the console address as environment variable, and it simply fetches the value of the key uh, test and, and you know prints it out on on the console as well as as, as part of the HTTP response. And the second endpoint is a simple update endpoint, which basically gets a body, and then it prints out the body as part of the lock uh, on the console. Uh, we are going to use this endpoint for the watch uh, part of the you know demo. Uh, I of course have a surrounding uh, Docker file and a few Dernif manifests so that I can deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster and a scaffold application or definition so that I can you know quickly iterate over the changes. Now let's go ahead and look at. Uh, the application deployed and the console uh, deployment. Let me switch to the other cluster which uh, I was going to demo on. Cool. So I can see the cop the application part I have is running. I have three console servers running as well as two console agents, uh, which are part of one deployment. And I can see that uh, the console Go application has a service which is load balance. Uh, so it creates a public facing IP. Let me click on that. Now, as I click on that, you can see it has gone and got the value of the configuration test uh, from, the, from the console store. And the console store, uh, we have two key values here. So test and current CD. So test just has a value of test. And that's how you know, it is showing in the, in the a URL when I hit the home page of that application. Cool. Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to look at the logs of this simple Golang application so that when I change the other key, which is current CT, I want to notice if it changes in the application. So I'm going to tell the logs of that application. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change the current CT in the console application. So right now I'm at London, for example, and let's say I want to move to Berlin. Uh, so I'm going to save this. And as you can see here in the logs of the application, it has uh, notified something of a change. So let's decode this value and see if the new value is reflecting in this uh, uh, console. Great. So we can see the new value, which is Berlin, has been notified to the application. So far, so good. Uh, this was great. Now let's go back to the slide and introduce a small twist in our demo. Now let's say my application is working really great, my business is growing, and I want to scale up uh, the application, you know, from one replicas to two replicas uh, because I'm getting more and more traffic, and and I want to uh, then verify it is still working as it was working before. So let's first scale the application. Now, as you can see, uh, one new container has been spawned. And what I want to do is I want to log, tell the logs of both the parts of this deployment, and then see if when I change the CD from Berlin to something else, does it reflect in both of them? So let's just wait for a second till the second container gets created. Then still creating, hopefully in a second. I'll just keep the command set in both other consoles so that we can keep watching them. Great, so the content is now up. And let me just quickly verify that. Okay, running, running, great. Now I'm gonna tail the logs of both the uh, parts that I have in my uh, application. The And I'm gonna just hit a few enters so we know or notice the change when it happens, right? Now let's go back to console again and change the key or the current city from Berlin to something else. Let's say I now move to Pune, which is a city in the west coast of India. So I'm going to save it here. Now, if you notice something interesting, one of the parts has got the update, which is the part here in the white terminal, but the other part hasn't got the information. What exactly went wrong? Can anybody in the audience guess what's happening here? And just so that we verify that this key is the right one, let me also decode that and show the value. This is just day 64 decoding. So yeah, the new city is Pune, but only one of the parts got the information, the other part did not get the information. So what is actually happening here is, uh, when we use the console deployment and console agent, it calls a service. Now service uh, object in Kubernetes is basically 
uh, round robin sending the request you know to the pod in the in the collection that it has and in this case what happens is only one of the pods get the request the other pod didn't get the request and hence we lost you know the update in the other pod now of course this is something we don't want ideally in production we want all the pods in that application to really get notified right now to fix the problem immediately i have one small fix uh, what i can do is instead of using the deployment i can start using the daemon set of console agents and then hopefully it works let's try it out immediately so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete the my deployment uh, which i had custom defined so that removes the console agents i had uh, and only keeps the server and then on the other hand i'm going to modify the helm chart of the console application uh, to also enable agents so I deploy it as a daemon set and I also pass my extra config of the watches so whenever current city is change uh, the service url is called for that you know go simple application great so let's go and uh, now uh, install the helm chart or update the helm chart rather now as you can see um, apart from three console servers we also have now three console agents and i can verify that it's a daemon set uh, so daemon set with three replicas as many number of nodes are there in the you know cluster and it will probably take a minute for it to bring up okay all of them are running already super now let me go to the console uh, you know uh, ui and wifi so i can see three servers as well as three agents uh, running successfully all of them green no issues with that now uh, let's again verify similar to previous uh, time if you know if i change the city is it going to reflect in the both the nodes or both the parts of my application cool so just again create a white space so that we can notice any change and and now i'm going to go to console modify my key and value and change the current city from pune to let's say mumbai great now as you can see both of them got an update uh, and both of them you know got the new value let's quickly verify the value as well cool so it is mumbai now now we saw how the deploying of your application and console agents does affect the way your applications operate and based on this experience you know i have come up with a few patterns now this is not the end of the story there is a larger demo that we can do quickly later but let's quickly go through some of the patterns right so the patterns can broadly be divided into patterns within the cluster and pattern across clusters or across hybrid systems so let me quickly cover those and i'll come back to uh, the demo again So, if you're using console as only a key value store, uh, I think running agents as a deployment is a perfectly valid choice. Uh, this is great for low volume use cases where you may not be hitting the key value pair uh, or the key value store, you know, very very hard. And the best part is you can scale the deployment of the agent as and when you need uh, to whatever scale you need, basically. Uh, the second way could be if you're using watch, you potentially want to deploy the console agent as a as a daemon set so it is running on all the nodes and it is able to call all the other pods application pods which are running uh, you know so that they get they all get the updates now this works as long as your http handler uh, is being used and not a an exec handler but if you are using a exec handler uh, it is best to use the console agent as a sidecar because the daemon set won't have access to the file system of the application pod so it can't call a script to actually execute uh, even if there is a change in the environment variable or any key that you are you know looking for change in um so in this case you should be using console agent as a sidecar now in practice you might be using a combination of these three strategies uh for certain applications where you're using your watch as a execution or a script being called you might use a sidecar you might as well be running a daemon set uh, so that all the nodes are able to access the agent uh, pretty locally pretty easily at the same time uh, you might also be running a few deployments potentially which are specifically targeted towards a very high uh you know high profit hitting uh, application which wants to use the access the key value a lot more frequently than others sort of right so based on the use case of the application you might end up uh, using one or more of these strategies to deploy your console agents in addition to console servers 
Now, uh, I was talking about earlier in the demo uh, that you know how things are going to work as I scale. So now let's scale. So if I look at the number of nodes I have, I have the number of nodes uh, to be three. And now I have also agent and server all running three. But my application has only uh, two replicas. Now let me scale that beyond the number of nodes that I have. So I have two replicas right now running. I'm going to scale this to five. Great. Now I should be able to look at uh, five instances of my Go application running here. And let's watch for a second for them, all of them to come up. Cool, all of them are already up. Now I want to watch all these five and see if the changes is actually received by all the five parts. So I'm gonna open a few consoles and show logs of all of them. The first one, second one. Third one. And the last one. Cool, so we have five replicas running, all of them uh, being tailed for logs here. Now let's go and change the currency again and see what happens. Let's move back to London, which was our original city here before we started the demo. As you can see, only three of the parts, uh, or actually two of them only got uh, the response here, uh, three other didn't get. And the reason for this is because uh, the daemon set is potentially calling uh, the local service, but that service is all into only one of the parts on that node. And the way uh, currently parts are placed, if I look at the application parts specifically, so the last uh, five rows, the, so two of them are on the same node and then the two others are on the same node and there is only one on the other node. Uh, so there is something going wrong. In this case, it would have still been better to use the strategy of using the sidecar instead of using uh, a deployment or daemon set uh, as console agents. So that was kind of the end of demo here. Uh, now, these are some of the patterns that we looked at, which are in cluster patterns for deploying console agent along with your applications uh, based on whether you are doing key value pair or watches or something else. Let's look at another interesting pattern uh, available you know, for users of hybrid uh, applications now, this feature in console is called service sync. Uh, what it basically does is it can sync services between your console cluster and Kubernetes cluster. And you can define whether it should be one way. For example, Kubernetes should sync all its services with console, or console should sync all its services with Kubernetes, or both ways. And this is an extremely useful pattern, uh, especially if you're dealing with hybrid workloads. For example, you are a company which is trying to migrate from uh, VMs to containers and Kubernetes but you still have, let's say 50% of your infrastructure still running on VM and you want to somehow manage them you know, in, a, in a uniform way. By doing this, what can happen is all the services that are on the VM can be discovered and accessed by services on the Kubernetes cluster. Other way around, all the services that are running on the Kubernetes cluster can be discovered and be accessed by the processes or services on the virtual machine. And uh, this is a super useful feature, especially for people migrating uh, from legacy to cloud native workloads. And just to give you a demo of that, uh, this is another cluster I have running in another region that I have enabled the service sync uh, you know, to be on. I can see there is one service console, which is registered by console itself, and the rest of the services are tagged by KHS. They're actually Kubernetes services. So for example, Kubernetes default service, the console UI service, and other services. And in the node side, if you go and look at it, there's a special node called KHS sync. Uh, which is basically denoting the fact that these are all services from Kubernetes and they are logically uh, put into a single node and then they can be seen here with their details and those kind of things. So that is the feature, uh, especially around the hybrid workloads. Now, it also comes up with a feature, console comes with a feature called cloud auto join. 
if you're running in the same uh, cloud provider, for example, you're running your Kubernetes cluster in Google or AWS, and you're running your other workloads on virtual machines in the same cloud provider, uh, and if you provide the credentials, your VMs as they come up can actually join an existing cluster running either on VMs or on a Kubernetes cluster, so that you don't have to do this configuration manually. And once you're set up the service sync uh, properly, all the other services can be discovered. And the configuration for that in the Helm chart is super simple. So you can search for service sync, uh, sorry, sync catalog, and you can enable it to be true. Uh, I have right now it, of course, false here, but I have declared it true in different uh, cluster. And then you can define and configure uh, which way that you want communication to be enabled, whether from two console or two Kubernetes. Not just that, you can also say, I only want to enable certain namespaces to be synced. Uh, only the applications which need to interact with legacy application will go all in you know, certain namespaces. And only those namespaces, the services will be synced with console. Uh, similarly, you can use either prefix or suffix and also uh, Kubernetes tags uh, to ensure that you can only uh, sync you know, certain class of services. Please. Great, so that was uh, about the general console and the console patterns. Now console also comes with a feature called connect, uh, which is like service mesh. And connect is basically, you define a sidecar with every application or every pod running in your application. And that acts as a proxy for every outbound and inbound communication with the rest of the world. And uh, in this case, the sidecar is acting as the data plane and the control plane being your console cluster. And there are tons of use cases like other you know, service mesh use cases, right from observability to l traffic management to cross-cluster cluster communication, uh, which can be enabled by enabling a mesh gateway, uh, which can be uh, enabled in two clusters and then two clusters can talk to each other almost as if they are in the same cluster. Uh, of course, the latency between those two clusters does affect how fast a store this communication can be. But this is super useful, especially if you're running in multiple cloud providers uh, in the region, which is almost you know in the close proximity of each other, or even in case where uh, the cluster is running technically in two different regions, but it could be used as a fallback mechanism in case one region goes down, the second region you know, could be reached out for the same service. And there's a great video about a lot of features in the console connect, which I haven't covered in my demo today uh, about, uh, you know, console mesh deep dive. You can go and check out on the YouTube here. So that was a very brief, you know, demo and uh, patterns that I want to talk about today in my, in my talk. Uh, thanks for listening to me patiently. I'm going to upload the code right now uh, after this uh, uh, webinar at this repository. Uh, I still have it on my local machine. I'm going to upload it right after this. And, uh, I would love to take any questions if there are. Thank you, Vishal. That was very cool. Um, so we actually had a question on YouTube Live. Mm -hmm. And let me relay that to you. So the question was, um, can you discuss about any recent issues related to daemon sets in Kubernetes? Um, maybe any challenges you faced um, in getting daemon sets or replica sets? Uh, to work, I guess, and maybe any drawbacks that you've encountered in going with that approach? Um, to be fair, uh, at least in my uh, working, I haven't uh, encountered any specific issues with daemon set. Uh, but daemon set, as they suggest, is, is for a very specific uh, kind of problems, which is if you want to run something on your entire cluster, uh, things like log management, monitoring agents, antivirus agents, and potentially something like console connect. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I can think about the demon set uh, problems, so to speak. 